every 15 people that went in through the process, 14 got rejected. The uh, Porsche Experience Center in Atlanta, down by the airport, is a really cool place as a car enthusiast to go check out. You've got an opportunity to hop in a brand new Porsche and you sit in the driver's seat with an instructor in the right seat and they help guide you through the course. It's more like a playground, less like a racetrack, and you get to go through modules, learn about vehicle dynamics, and specifically focus on what you want to learn. This has been really exciting for me. I've been in motorsports as a hobbyist for a while now. Uh, it all started back in college. Some friends of mine went to Little Talladega, TGPR, Talladega Grand Prix Raceway in Alabama. At the time, it was pretty cheap to just rent. About a grand would rent out the whole track. You get a group of people together, go rent it, comes out to about $100 a person, and then you've got lunch provided and you're good to go. So I, I shared a car with a friend. We went over there and I outran track prepped E36 M3s in my buddy's STI and I just thought I was, you know, the best driver. And so at that point I decided this is something that I really love, really want to get into track days and uh, just didn't have the opportunity for a while. Later on I was able to um, pick up a Miata and as many do, that became my first step into track days. So I joined up with a group called Just Track It. They were tabling at Caffeine and Octane, and I thought, wow, this is the way to do it. Put a roll bar in, racing seat, and the rest is history. So fast forward a few years, I started getting deeper and deeper, going 12 to 14 times a year, and uh, eventually got asked to be an instructor. So after doing a little bit of instructing and kind of you know, skin of my knees on the whole process, I started to learn how to adapt to different types of drivers and different types of cars and teach different techniques. Even picked up on some things that I've been doing wrong the whole time. When you try to teach somebody else, you learn that that much more deeply. So I had found through this process that a few of my friends I had made actually work at the Porsche Experience Center. And so I started talking to them. It, it piqued my interest. Like, man, wouldn't it be cool if I could go work there. No, that's, that's, that's not for me. I'm not at that caliber. And so I started poking and prodding and eventually I started getting the feedback of, yeah, you should try. And so absolutely that's what I did. I showed up and it was a very thorough process. I went in and initially it was just like a regular job interview. So send me your resume. We want to know where you've worked in the past. Tell us about your driving record. And so I explained a little bit of my backstory and then when I showed up, uh, they immediately sent me out for effectively what was an experience. So I got to go drive the car, they sat right seat, and just evaluated my driving. So if I were to sign up and go normally, it'd be a very different atmosphere because I'd be excited to do it, it's all about me, but in this case, it, it was actually a job interview. So I went through, I did the modules, and I even picked up on how my vision wasn't as good as it needed to be. And I don't mean that I'm not 2020 or the reason I have my glasses. What I mean by that is using your eyes to position where you want to send the car is absolutely critical. One of the modules at the Experience Center is a kick plate. In order to uh, complete this module, you drive over this metal plate. The rest of the surface is epoxy and wet. So it's incredibly slick and as your rear tires pass over the plate, it kicks you randomly left or right. At that point, you've simulated going into a skid, left or right, and you have to recover it. So of course, we all know if we've watched cars, we know that you need to turn into the skid to try to, to save it, but just doing that on the knowledge is difficult. And when you use your vision to look ahead and pick a reference point, you'll be quicker, you'll counteract it um, earlier, and therefore you'll be able to save it. So I was picking up these skills through the, the process and then applying everything I've learned as well and getting through those modules. It was a really nerve wracking process going through the interviews. Uh, it wasn't just the initial one, it wasn't just the drive. After you prove that you could drive, then we swap positions. Now you're actually acting as an, a coach. So from the right seat, you would be with someone that would be really timid and you'd have to work them up. And you'd be with someone overly aggressive and you'd have to catch them. And the key was, can you predict when something's about to go wrong. Because if you can only identify it when it's gone wrong, it's too late. 
it took a series of these and it took me, I think, five different days at the Experience Center uh, in order to get checked off to come on as an instructor. And from what I hear, that's about typical. Through the interview process, I noticed that all the other coaches were being a bit distant. And I thought that was odd. But the moment that I got checked off, everybody became really friendly again. And they cited the reason that at that time, every 15 people that went in through the process, 14 got rejected. So they've learned to not get close to the people trying to get the job because it's not likely that they'd stick around. So hearing that, I was really excited to have made the cut and joined the team. Um, and so I had to keep myself up to that high standard that I had proven myself at. It was an amazing process and it was still intimidating going into those first sessions. So in order to not throw you in the deep end, the way they start out, is there's two types of uh, events that we hold there. We can have individual drives, we also have corporates. So a corporate is when you'd have a number of people together and they would rotate through different cars. So as a coach, you'd stay in one car and car, uh, people would file into your car, you'd go on a reduced time experience and then they'd swap out for somebody else. You really get to build a rhythm this way and people typically don't get wildly out of control in that shorter time so you can kind of learn in a safer ex experience that way. Once you've done a couple of those, then they send you out for individual 90-minute sessions. Those 90-minute sessions would be in specific cars. So when you start out, at, at my time it was the 718. So the 718 Boxster and Cayman were the slower vehicles in, in the experience, but still a great opportunity. And, and I tell anybody that's interested in this, try out the 718. You may be really excited. It's like, man, it's not that much more for more car. And there's a lot to be learned from there, but you'll be so focused on the driving experience that simplifying things and taking more out of the equation is gonna gain you that much more. Come back again and try another car. And so I learned the same way. I started out in the 718. Later, I got check checked off in the 911. And then from there, the uh, Targa 4S and the all-wheel drive vehicles. The reason for that progression is there's very different driving dynamics in each of those cars. And part of the experience is available is that you can compare those back to back. So we've got a mid verse rear program. Try the 718, then go try a Carrera S. You'll feel the weight's in a different place. The overall weight's different. That polar moment of inertia, it's a very technical term, but what it basically means is how does the weight feel when you rotate the car? It's very different between a mid-engine car versus a rear-engine car. My first day on the job was probably about as hard as it would ever get. Um, in the, a short course of time, I got in with every kind of person. So I had uh, someone that we had to focus on hand communications because her first language was not English. And that was a bit of a challenge and really threw me for a loop but we built a, a system together and I knew I had my team to fall back on if, if things uh, got into a dangerous situation. And then I had some incredible people that were just so excited to be there that we could just cruise around and they were gonna have the time of their lives. And that made it easy on me. And then they threw a hot shot my way. There was a young kid who had been racing Ferrari Challenge and races 911 Cup cars. And then he hopped in with me and I'm like, oh man, I've never done anything like that. How can I possibly uh, you know, keep this kid under control and keep things safe? This is where the distinction comes in of instructor versus coach. At Porsche, we are Porsche driving coach. And the reason for that definition is we can help anybody even if their skill level surpasses us. What we're here to do is analyze what they're doing, find ways to improve, find ways to give feedback, and find ways to interact with them. We're not just teaching the basics, we're there to help them improve and help them get the most out of the experience. So even that uh, racer who's familiar with the Porsche platform, I was able to give him some critique, manage his state of mind, and keep us safe while having a great time. It was a really neat experience and I learned so much even on that first day, but thankfully everything worked out great and I was able to come back for the next one. Something you might expect with this scenario is that crashes would happen all the time. I mean, we've got people that, I mean, you've seen Georgia drivers or just drivers around you and they can't manage to keep it together on the street. Um, so put them in a car they've never driven before on a tight course, it sounds like a recipe for disaster. 
you would be surprised how infrequent we have any kind of incident. I even mean putting tires on the grass. It's very rare any of this happens. We keep things well under control, and a big part of it is that we have these modules. These modules are not on a set schedule. You don't have to sign up to go to these modules. As soon as you drive out, it's at the instructor's discretion. Hey, let's go over here and try out this module. This is what I feel like is missing from the HPDE world. You spend all of your time coaching, sitting still in the car, you know, walking around the paddock, or on the racetrack. There's nothing in between. And the mentality that someone goes through when they get onto the racetrack is a totally different one than when they're parked. And feeling that light switch can be really scary. So what's exciting about this opportunity is if someone's timid, the first thing I do is I bring them over to our dynamics pad. In our dynamics pad, we have a safe area that's coned off to accelerate as fast as possible, even utilizing launch control as much as you want, and then slamming on the brakes and feeling ABS. It's a very simple set of instructions to just accelerate as hard as you can and slam on the brakes. And when I get people doing that, they're like, wow, I can do this. I've never done anything like this in my life, but I can do this. I can drive a car really hard. I can get a lot out of a car. So we do that and we get back on the circuit and they're like, oh, there's a little more that this car is capable of. I'm gonna trust it. So we can bring people up that way. And if somebody starts really moving the car around and they're not recognizing that there's real risk involved with that, we can immediately pull off. Let's go over to the kick plate. Let's go over to the low friction circle, which is basically a skid pad that's wet down. And let's go feel like what happens if you do make that mistake, if you do push it beyond the limit, because we can do that at a much slower speed in those modules. So we take them over to the module and you, you can do the same kind of jerking motion and then you realize, whoa, I spun. So we can teach those fundamentals in a safe way and then we go back and apply it. These are the strategies that we put in place. We have a, a series of training that we do as instructors to try to prepare for these scenarios, but we have the right toolkit to keep people safe, and that's how we keep from crashing. If you love VinWiki, you'll have heard us talk about minimizing ownership cost on exotic cars. But the guys at Exotic Car Hacks have developed a system, an educational resource that you can access now using exoticcarhacks.com slash VinWiki and get the best membership rates that they've offered since Black Friday. It shows you how to leverage financing, minimize what you pay, maximize how you sell it, and minimize the cost while you've got it. So be sure to join their community of owners and enthusiasts today at exoticcarhacks.com slash VinWiki and it'll be easier than ever to buy, own, and sell, and love the car of your dreams.